burden so hard to bear. And we wonder, does anyone even care? When it seems life is hopeless and everything's gone wrong, I look around. Whatever comes my way
book of Revelation, chapter 13. When I got home, after we had gone out uh, for a meal, I start looking into certain things and I know that God would work through the grace age at different periods of time. And I know it's not recorded in the Bible as such. But I want to bring to your remembrance what I've been speaking about this morning. That how Jesus has sent his angel at different occurrences down through the grace age. And I know if I say it, you'll say, oh yes, forgot about that one. The George Washington vision. An angel was sent to George Washington. And it has very much to do in the time that is coming up the road. So it was an angel that went and spoke to George Washington. The world may not believe it, but I do. I believe God, believe Jesus sent an angel to speak to America of some of the things that she was going to befall her as time would go through. Just like Gabriel spoke to Daniel about the histories of the Jews of the 70 weeks of Daniel. It's not written, no. But George Washington gave an outline, a preview of time for America, which we find in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. Time's going to prove this out. Amen. I know the prophet of this age believed it. Now it's not because the prophet believes it that I believe it. I can see it in the word. God has, in time, God's going to vindicate or prove his word. Amen. All right, in the 13th chapter, starting at verse 11, I know some of this is things you have heard before. But again, I want to bring and close this down to a place of how long will America really last? Because what happens to America is going to happen to us. Now when it's, we say America, yes, the United States is the predominant country in the picture. But I would say it's North America that's going to be involved. Canada included. Because we're so tied to that American way of economics and certainly their influence of way of life. Yes, there is a bit of difference in Canada, but not only too much. Amen. All right. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Just in that verse, one verse gives you a profile of the life of America. When the forefathers came over from Europe to come to populate the land here in North America, America was not speaking as a dragon or had the two horns present into her at that point in time. Actually, the conditions for our forefather, especially America, to come over, certain things had to exist in the European theater during the 14th and 15th and 16th and 17th century. For almost a thousand years, 
while the Catholic Church reigned from about 500 A.D. to about 1500. Now, when we say dates, God is not the one that goes to put a specific number. It's the picture you've got to be, behold. So from 500, about 500 A.D., why around 500? That's when the papacy came to its preeminence. Actually, if I go back a little bit, sorry, if I go back a little bit more history, backwards a little bit. In leading from the Nicene Council, where Satan was instrumental in gathering more tares in than true believer to have a consensus on the Godhead, which they brought in a Trinity doctrine. This Trinity doctrine lies in that mother church. It is the mother harlot of Revelation chapter 17. And the sad thing is today that daughters don't even see that they are the daughters of her. Because of that Trinity doctrine. The apostles never believed in a Trinity doctrine. But they'll hold on that. Just like a union that's out there in the world today, if anyone says out of turn, that union body just goes and grabs it and stops it. But now from 325, from the time Constantine, little by little, as the Roman Empire was going down, the papacy started to get some preeminence. But it didn't have really the preeminence to rule or to be in the eyes of the people. A certain to have a, a great influence. But how many remember Attila the Hun? You read him in history, and he left the borders of China, sweeping all across Asia, and as he reaches now the northern part of Italy, the Roman army wasn't really a match for him. So who goes to meet him in the northern Alps but a pope? Without arms, without a military escort. Yes, he was brazen. Approaching a man that wouldn't think twice of cutting your throat. But Satan had his hour. He goes to speak to Attila the Hun. And Attila the hen believes him in what he said. If you come down and do these things, God's going to punish him. I'll put it in my own words. And here's this great leader of that vast empire that was flowing through from the east going towards the west, towards Europe. And the Pope comes back home without a scratch or a scar. And that's when the papacy now takes a preeminence. Because the people in Rome were looking for a hero. They always did. So that's why around 500. Now I think until when he went to see him it was around 490 something. Now please if it's, the date's not right. It's in that period of time. The, the thing is not to know the exact date. It's to know the event that triggers something else. Now the people. That papacy now has been elevated. To such a place that people want him. Because he's our hero. And now the strength of the papacy. Because Satan knew that the political side. And the military side of Rome. Was going to fall. Now we have that papacy. But then from the time of the papacy. From 500 AD. Till about 1500 AD. How many have heard through history. The lords and serf conditions. You're, the people were under lordships. The rich lords would own, own the land, and the peasants were like slave. And he gave maybe might have given them a little bit, but they were under a lordship and serf conditions. And like Brother Jackson said, they went in riding horse cart. Ox cart, and they came out riding or ox cart. Because there was no advance 
There was no advance in revelation. And there was no advancement in the economic or work on things in the world. They go hand in hand. Things sometimes, there's things that goes hand in hand more than you and I realize. Today, we have so many sophisticated modern inventions. Man's knowledge has increased by bounds, leaps and bounds. But the little bride of Jesus Christ has moved in revelation by leaps and bounds also. Not the church world, but the bride has. All right. And all this to say is this. From when we reach around 1500, Martin Luther, he comes on the scene. He takes a whack of that authority of that papacy. It starts, it's the downward trend of the authority of the papacy from there on down that it is seen. Because God's in it. He's striking that thing with a blow with the sword of his word. But then as other reformers comes on the scene, and you had a number of them, Calvin, Zigley. As they start hacking away also at the Catholic Church, around that time, in France you had a king, uh, an emperor that was called Napoleon. There's no, no goodness in Napoleon. But he didn't like the Pope and the way the Pope was doing things. Actually, he was in such a disagreement with one, he took Philip and put him in jail in Avignon. That's much how much Napoleon thought about the Pope. This sets in the mind of the people now around that time. Hey, he's not the God Almighty that he claims to be. That's in the mind of the people. And at that time, Napoleon, in order to seal his patriots to follow him, he gives them liberty and he brings in the Napoleon Code of Law. Now, England had tried it in the around 1100 or around 1000 with the Magna Carta. Anybody heard about the Magna Carta? Yeah, there is a few. But it didn't really hit the population till Napoleon came on the scene. And now people had a taste of some freedom. No longer where they had to bow down to the Catholic Church. And no longer had they bowed down to some lordship that made their lives so miserable. This sets up in Europe now a groundwork where now people have a freedom of choice. At the same time, Christopher Columbus sets sails to America and discovers a new land. As time now progresses, you have a place where people can go. Now they have certain freedoms. And a way the new world needed to be populated. And those that did come, the, a majority of them, wanted to come for religious freedom. To make sure that the fangs of the Catholic Church would not reach there. And so you have our forefathers, especially in America, has come over. That's why it is pictured America as a lamb. Now, this is all history to you. You've heard it before, but sometimes you need to hear it again. But now we're going to move on in, in time. So verse 11 is a summary of the life of America. And the reason she spake as a dragon... That dragon it was in Europe it was in that Roman Empire even when Jesus came you see it pictured in Revelation chapter 12 and the dragon was wroth with the woman it was in that system in the Caesars <coughs> It changed its ways and Satan infiltrated himself in that Catholicism, in that Catholic Church. But when it got its wound to its head, 
as the migration came to Europe was not overnight to be populated in America, so Satan also starts, that dragon now starts to move from that beast in Europe and wants to come start influencing this land that's in America. There's only one dragon in the Bible. Amen. Not a whole bunch. There's only one Satan. It says Satan is that dragon. How many Satan do you know? From the Bible I only see one. But there's a lot of angels that follows him. Alright. So now is that dragon. America is speaking as that dragon. But as it is a beast, uh, a lamb, from the time of the forefathers landing till about World War II, America was speaking as a land. First of all, he didn't have no military might to speak as a dragon and no worldly influence before World War II to impose itself as a dragon. How many can, if you're going to speak like a dragon, you better carry a big bat or have the means to back up your words. All right? So prior from the coming of the forefathers to the land till you reach World War II, America is that land in Revelation chapter 13. But then when World War II comes in 19... 39 to 1945, as Hitler decides to slaughter, to get rid of all the Jews that he can, time is going to be a changing. When World War II ends, because America's involvement in the war, in the war to help England and the European countries, when that war ended, and her in helping those nations, she came a very rich and powerful nation. She had a navy that, when the war ended, that outshone the British Navy. Had an air force that was unequal on the planet. You take those P-51 Mustangs that they had during those days, no enemy aircraft could touch it. To them, it was like playing a video game, those who were flying, those P-51s. Those earlier versions, when America was growing, yes, they had some difficulty. They, the enemies would sometimes harass them, especially the P-41s and the... Well, I better not get that stuff. That's all just hardware stuff. But just to show that, in a very short order, now God is allowing America to rise. But at the same time, there becomes... A spirit in Europe. If we're ever going to survive. Certain men start to get inspired. We must work together. Yes we can re keep our respective nations. But somehow. We're almost. I don't know how many years. 500 years or plus. We've been fighting each other. And all we've been doing is going downhill. So as the American money goes in to rebuild Europe, now the head of the beast, no, it didn't start right immediately after World War II, but when you start reaching in the 80s, that European Union of some nations started to appear. Now America, by that time, is starting to impose its will it started shortly after World War II. How many remember the Korean War? America says, Russia, you ain't going in there. We're going to try to stop you. So it sends its army into that area. But just only to get its hands slapped, if you want to. Because they had to pull out and let it go. So now America is now knowing that she is a powerful nation. She's the first one that had the atomic bomb to begin with. Now she's on that road to start speaking like a dragon because she's got the military and the economics 
to back her up to speak that way. Now Satan is fully in, in, enveloped in the affairs of America. Oh, they say we trust in God, but if they see the Bible, they'd see that the leadership is speaking like a dragon. You've got to do business the way we do it. And if you try to hinder us, we'll take you out of the way. Or we'll change your country. And not only that, America, in itself, it thinks, oh, we're such a holy nation. God's blessing us. Yes, God has blessed you. And if you'd have seen the light after World War II, you would have been something different than you are today. If you'd have believed your forefather, George Washington, in his vision, knowing what's come up the road, you wouldn't act the way you do. And if you were, and if God was really with you, you wouldn't cause Israel to compromise her land because. Israel has to be back in the homeland before Jesus Christ comes back. It couldn't care less. That's the outcome when you look at it. Oh, Israel, you've got to give up some land for the sake of peace. America, you are no longer a Christian nation. Yes, there's Christians in it. But the leadership is corrupt. They don't want no longer God in their affairs or anything like that. Oh yes, when a disaster comes, oh Lord, help us. But when they come to plan things and do things, Lord, bless my plan even though it goes against your word. They're blind as a bat and don't see what's coming up the road. And it's Satan that has blinded them. Now that dragon that's in America, remember there's only one dragon. My Bible tells me when the week of Daniel arrives, <laughs> Satan, which is that dragon, he's going to be in that European beast, that Roman beast, for its last ride in that week of Daniel. So from here on in, till the time of the week of Daniel begins, that dragon is still seen speaking. Actually, it's so advanced. I was watching a documentary about future weapons that they have. They got this predator. It can fly seven miles up, five to seven miles up. You can't see it up there. But it has a certain telescope that it could even read a newspaper of you being on the ground. Now they equip this with missiles to take out their enemy, to enforce their will. And they're doing it in different countries wherever the Taliban is at. That's where the Taliban for now. But that potential is there which no other nation possessed at that point. But now they are going one step further. They can take, well, the B. The B-1 bomber or the B-52s, which is the largest bomber in the world. They get these little drone miniatures flying robots, if you want to, of the Predator. And they launch maybe a hundred of these and they all communicate with one another and they're watching a whole battlefield. And so the military can see pictures, real on-time things that are happening. No nation's got that technology. And while America's got that technology and the funds to keep it going, there's no nation's going to match it. But how long will America last? All right. Uh, I, I know I'm going over and over, but just uh, Now let's go into a little bit more. Verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. Who? Satan, the dragon. 
has he influenced Rome and the Vatican? He's influencing America. Hey, the daughters are behaving like mother. So he has no trouble in manipulating the daughters, which a lot of them are in America. Right? All right. And he caused all, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This too is a summarization. He's going to, how is he going to cause the earth to worship the first beast? Is America saying, worship Europe? Europe is the place? No, not right yet. But there will be an hour and there will be a moment in time it will. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now from verse 13 on down, it's going to take you from 1945 right up to the hour of the week of Daniel. Verse 13. This fire come down from heaven. Man has made bombs flying out of aircrafts even before World War I. And they had bombs that you could shoot from a, a cannon. Well, not a bomb, a uh, shell if you want to. But this fire come down from heaven, to me, is speaking about the nuclear bomb that America developed and exploded on Nagasaki in Japan in 1945, in the month of August. And when that bomb went off, you're looking at, time-wise, World War II is coming to an end. Europe has not been together yet. That's why the scripture says, it's done in the sight of men. There is no beast set up. So the... That's why the scripture couldn't say he done it in the sight of the beast in verse 13. But when we reach now to verse 14, watch. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Scientific miracles we were taught. Which he had power to do, now watch, in the sight of the beast. Thou you have gone from 1945 to 1991, the Gulf War. By 1991, from the 80s actually, leading up to 1991, the head of the beast, the EU, has been formed. So now the beast does exist. And these scientific miracles of sending a cruise missile some hundreds or even almost a thousand miles away hit a building and make it fly through a, a window that you've chosen in that building that's pretty well scientific I'd have to say the old apostle John would have to say how in the world can they do that right I can't throw a stone 200 feet let alone hit something a thousand miles away well, I'm putting in my own words so we can understand. So those now, in verse 14, you are nearing 1991, the Gulf War with America, had on display. Now remember, it's in the sight of the beast. If we did not have television in 1991, when the Gulf, is it 1991, the Gulf War, or 1992? 91, I think it is. Yeah, don't hang me on dates. I'm not good for dates. Now, when America went in, if there'd been no television, now yes, the beast, yes, it's a territory, but there's people that makes up that thing. Europe would have never saw those miracles in display in their sights. They'd have heard about it in paper, but that's not in sight, is it? All right. Now as we go on a little bit more, 
And he, this is Satan, the dragon, had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. That is not yet. That's coming up the road. Which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he, Satan, had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship. The image should be killed. And he caused all, both small, great, rich, poor, free, bond to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead. Now, in this part, this is describing the time frame around Ezekiel 38 and 39. The image of the beast and we all heard Brother Branham say, well that's America. The Protestant, the Protestant denominations. I'll have to remind you, the Bible tells us that that beast system is only allowed to kill in a quarter part of the earth. Not in America. Not in the week of Daniel when the mark is enforced. Was Brother Branham wrong? No. He was looking at those denominational church, those daughters of that mother harlot, which was an image to that Catholic church, which is the woman that rides it. But in Europe is every representation of the Protestant denomination that is in America. There's more of the colder denominations in Europe than there is of the evangelical type in America. I'll grant you that. So if that beast is going to kill with and with the image of the beast to do it, then somehow it has to be pictured in Europe. How many follow? No, you're not following. Yes, you are? No? Well, give me a signal. <laughs> I know, it's just like when the teacher asks something, nobody wants to lift up their hand either. Uh, I've been there. All right. Now he says, He, Satan, had power to give unto the image of the beast and to the image of the beast that he should both speak and cause as many as should not worship the image should be, ki should be killed. And he caused all, both small, great, rich, free, and bond to receive a mark in their right hand. This is all intertwined. Yes, there's condition that leads up to that hour. But the mark is only inst instilled in the middle of the week. The dragon, Satan, he will be over here, yes. The week begins here. Somewhere after that Ezekiel 39 war, when that week begins, that dragon has moved from America now to the European beast that he always wanted. That's why he wanted that first beast to be built. That was his baby. He had it a long while back. He is closer to Israel there than he is in America. America was just a means to get the final product to get Europe where he wanted to influence that thing for the time when the week of Daniel would begin. Now we are arriving to some crucial or instrumental area of time. We are just somewheres 
may be months away from the miraculous war. Is there going to be a miraculous war? You can be rest. Your boots, it will. Because you're going to have to throw the type out of Joshua and Jericho. Remember the children of Israel? How they went and walked around the city seven times. And on the seventh day, they ran around seven times. And when they blew the horn, the walls fell. Well, it, if you note, the Gentiles, that represents the Gentiles, them going around the city, it ended with a war. Them going in, the Jews taken, now going in to take their land. And when this arrives, when God is getting ready to finish us up, no, it's not going to finish us up in the miraculous war. But it's the beginning of the finishing of the end. And now God is going to also, we'll see the type being fulfilled of what would happen in Joshua's day. That the Gentile, that Israel was out of the land for seven dispensation of time. And he marks it with a war. When this takes place, that light of Israel will start to rise. No, he's not risen where his, their prophets are there, but it's on the beginning to start to rise. Because at that miracle war, now they'll no longer, Jews will no longer say, the God of Moses. Well, they say, the God that brought us out of the land. We have seen him on display. And I have to say, there's just a little spark what I saw this morning. Of those Jewish rabbis say, now you, we can go on that temple mount. Something is a changing. God is preparing the groundwork for when the time comes for that miraculous war to unfold itself. But now we're speaking about America. As that takes place, it shakes your denominational world. It shakes the leaders of the world. It makes a change of attitude. People will send in help to have Jerusalem and the temple built. But there's another group of Muslims that are very dissatisfied and hate Israel to the core. And they want to destroy her, so they make an attempt in Ezekiel 38, 39. Because the religious world, including the Catholic Church, and even your Pentecostals, all of them don't see it coming. But when Ezekiel 38, 39 hits, the natural people of the world in Europe, as well in America, Yes, God will destroy the army that comes in Israel. But there's also going to be raining fire on Gog and Magog that those nations are going to be set down once and for all. And the nations will have held their breath and thought we have come to World War III or Armageddon and the nuclear war. But as soon as it starts, it stops. Now they're in disarray knowing what's taking place. It really has upset the economics of the world. America, now they're looking for, I put it, I put it. They're looking for a system that can keep peace in the world. UN has failed miserably. Well, it's no good now anyway. Doesn't do much. So now, as that week begins, as they're scrambling to bring a peace system, yes, that Pope will say, Hey, I've got a system that's going to be kind of nice. I've got emissaries in all your nations, including you, America. Because the market's not been installed yet. And I believe even America will help participate in setting up the conditions for that Antichrist system. 
The reason, why am I saying this? Because of Revelation chapter 10 verse 11. It'll only go a few short months. And God will utterly judge America. Because I want to bring to your remembrance as John, that old apostle that lived in 96 AD, and he was still in 96 AD when he saw what he saw in Revelation chapter 10. He's not coming to fulfill it. But he's a representation of what the bride is going to be doing. And she's going to prophesy to the nations, tongues, and kings. Not pleasant words. But doom and gloom and woe and lamentations. America here. Will need to hear the woes, the lamentations. And the prophecy to her as well. When the bride goes and prophesies to the kings and nations and so forth. Even when the hour arrives that she is doing this. As she has now just entered a few days into the week of Daniel. Because we will be a few days in it. it I don't care what's be taking place. Nothing will change the, ma the mind of the leadership of China. Nor Japan. Nor any of those Eastern Asian countries. If you want to prophesy something, you better come from their brand of religion. So the bride is going to be prophesying to, from the places that she's come out from. From Christ the world of Christianity. How many can see that? Well, I'll, I'll, if I'm just myself, I'm just myself. Praise the Lord. Now as the bride goes forth and she is speaking woes and lamentations to the leadership. Why are they listening? Because they have come through Ezekiel 38, 39. They don't know where they're at. They thought the world was coming apart. And now they're putting up a system and they think everything's going to go fine. And now God has anointed his bride with power and authority. And they're going to be speaking to those kings because they want to hear something. Whether God's word is, whether God is real or not. They'll be in tune to listen. But they won't like what they hear. Now... That's going to be the thing prophesied to those kings and nations and tongues and so forth. Why prophesy that to America? Right here in the opening days. Why prophesy that to her if she's already been judged? Huh? What's the point? She knows already. God has dealt with her. Are we seeing the picture? So that's why I'm saying America will probably last till the opening days just in time for that bride to go to Washington, to go to Ottawa, to go to Fredericton, or wherever the place may be, and speak, speak them, you have been found wanting, and now you're headed for that week of Daniel, you're, it's headed for destruction. And I believe in very short order. At that time, Canada and the United States are going to receive a severe judgment. Yes, God's been warning. Leading up to this hour, as it's going near there. But America is still the powerhouse today. Right? Uh-huh. But when that time comes, when George Washington vision unfolds, and there's a war in America, that third war that takes place, it's not going to take years and years and years to fulfill with the, with the modern military equipment 
You're talking about weeks, maybe a month. It'll be over. They got equipment that can move pretty fast. Those B-52 bombers, they go pretty quick. Missiles. And those tanks, they got them all over in different places of the country. So if God does deem to have her judged right here in that first year. Now, like, people say, oh, Brother Fred said it was the first year. I said, in about that time. God may open. When those thunders come, we're going to know more. God will point something more clearly, more closely to his second coming. Because that's what the thunders are going to be doing for the bride to let her know. But then when the, the prophesy to the nations, that's the thing that's told to the nation. It's not for the bride, it's for the nation. So, after a month, the war is over. Well, you still got two and three quarter years left for America to be made prepared to receive the woman, Israel. God doesn't have to have America ready ten years before it's time. Because I'll tell you this, if America was made to be ready ten years before it's time, it don't take long for people to corrupt themselves again. Huh? Look after World War II, people were looking, Lord, this great war has ended. And for a short space of time, they turned to the Lord and God moved with that mighty power in the net. But then it didn't take them long. Bingo. They're off to the races with Satan. So God is not going to leave her, America, too long in order to receive the woman Israel in America. That's what the Lord has been dealing with me. If, about Revelation chapter 10, verse 11, if we're going to prophesy to nations, it's those that need it. Well, we're all still here. Praise the Lord. Maybe I should have preached a better day for Mother's Day. Now, we don't observe that, but we respect mothers. Anyway, just leave things there. I mean, there comes a point in time, if you're a grown-up, you have to learn on your own. You can't always be led by the hand and tell, well, you can't do this now. You can't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't dress like that. You shouldn't conduct yourself like that. Hey, are you going to remain bathed all along? He's, the Lord's coming for the grown-up. Those that have sincere work, meet in this, in the revelated word, but know how to conduct themselves. Now, if you want me to preach a, a hair-pulling, wool-pulling message, well, maybe, maybe it might be do us some good. But I don't know if I'll be able to make it out the back door here. But what I'm trying to say, you're no longer babies. You know what you need to do. If you don't, you have that thing that's in between your lips called a tongue. Ask. Praise the Lord. Well, this ministry of the fivefold ministry, its main objective is to feed full grown children of God. That's why. You don't find too many preaching just a salvational message. Because if we had to preach a salvational message, are you lost all the time? You have to get redeemed? You're only born again but one time anyway to begin with. I'll praise the Lord. Now, you never know. Maybe next week the Lord will just leave you a message that's going to be so hot here you might not want to be here. <laughs> but I love this word of God. I like to see things. If he said he called us his friends and let us know what's taking place, then he's going to do it. And he'll use whatever vessel to accomplish it. I, there's different ministries that you can hook up on the internet. 
Now, I'm not talking about PTL and those things. I'm talking about those in the five form ministry. We need all five. But all five ministries won't be in one place. But whatever ministry is ordained in that assembly, that may be a certain thing that that assembly needs more than another type of ministry. But even though God has called one to be in a certain ministry, He can use him from time to time to address the other areas which he's, he's not really, not that He's not called for it, but God can use him in that capacity. Not all our pastors, not all our teachers, not all our evangelists, not all our, our apostles. A little bit of everything. No, that's not right either. But, praise the Lord. And the five old ministry in this hour won't come telling you, I'm this and that and the other thing. Really, the onus is on the individual to recognize <coughs> what God is using and let God give it to the people however they see things. Not that you have... Oh. Then if you say that, people say, well, people can do everything and they can label everything. No. My sheep hear my voice. And another they will not follow. And who's causing them to hear his voice? That's God himself, the Holy Spirit. That comforter that you have, when the true word comes through, it fits, it, it's my, it just manna to your soul. And once they don't fit, they boys oh boys, it's like eating a, a rock in the middle of an apple pie. Crunch. If you got fault teeth, there goes your teeth. Right? Well, I have to say something to cheer you up. Praise the Lord. All right, let, have any musician to come at this time. I may be stopped at this point.